Hey, Mary. So for uh, comparing fractions and mixed numbers, we want to represent fractions so that they can compare and order them using different methods, identify unit fractions so that you can determine the relationship with other fractional amounts, and apply my knowledge of integers so that I can explain how positive and negative signs affect fractions. Uh, the first thing I hope you guys remember from grade eight is how do you turn a mixed number to an improper fraction? Let's see if you guys, do you get anyone remember how to do that? Someone give me an example of a mixed number fraction. Simon? One and four tenths. Okay, one and four tenths. I need to convert this into an improper fraction. Does anyone want to take a guess as to how to do this? Gabe? Uh, you, basically, you basically add the amount of time, like you multiply one mm -hmm. by the bottom number mm -hmm. of the fraction. Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply your denominator by this whole number here. So it's going to work two ways. So you're going to multiply. And then whatever you get from that multiplication, you have to add... The, the, the numerator. So for example, it would be like bed mass. So you do 10 or one times 10 plus four. So what would that give me? One times 10 plus four, 14. So my mixed number fraction becomes, or my improper fraction becomes 14 over 10. Now we can go the opposite. We can go from improper to a mixed number. So again, someone give me an improper fraction. That's where your numerator is bigger than the, no the denominator below. 15 over 2. So like I said before, a fraction is also the same thing as saying division. Obviously, 15 over 2 is going to give me a decimal. So now you guys have to ask yourself, how many times can I divide 15 by 2 without going over? Let's see if anyone can figure this out. Gabe? Seven. Seven. That's the lowest number I can divide 15 by without it going over. Because if you do eight, that's 16, and you can't have 16 because you need the number to be lower. So like Gabe said, we're gonna do, so we have two times seven, is equal to 14, so we're good, which means seven is going to be my number that's in front. So I have seven. So we know seven times two gives me 14. However, there are 15 pieces. So how many pieces more do I need to get to 15? So I'm at 14. How many more do I need? Your denominator always stays the same, by the way. Lauren? One. One. So 15 over 2 is the same thing as saying 7 and 1 half. And if you're to do the method that, may, that Gabe mentioned earlier, we do 7 times 2, which is 14, plus 1, which is 15. So we get 15 over 2, which means these two are the same as each other. Hmm? So mixed number to improper is the easiest one. Improper to mix is the harder one. So remember how I said fraction is the same thing as division? So obviously when we do 15 divided by two, we get a decimal, right? We don't want a decimal. So we need to figure out the lowest number I can multiply seven by to get as close to 15. So someone said two times seven because that's very close to 14. I can't go over it because I only have 15 pieces. I need something below 15, which is why two times seven works because I only get 14. So the number you multiply two by in this case, which is my seven, that becomes a number that comes in front of that mixed number fraction. 
And then your denominator will always stay the same. So you have seven as something over two. And then you can fill in the blanks after. So you do seven times two, which is 14. And because my numerator is 15, I need one more to get to 15, which is why my numerator is going to be one. I'll give you guys an example to do by yourself. So I'm gonna have you guys go from improper to mixed. So let's do 17 over three, and I want you to change that into a mixed number. You have the answer already? Yes. Okay, give everyone else a couple of seconds. You have the answer in? Okay, hold on. Hey, Aaron, what's the answer? 15 and 2 thirds. 15 and 2 thirds? Five, 5 and 2 thirds. Was anyone else able to get 5 and 2 thirds? Yes or no? Okay. So now, copy this and then we'll move on to the next thing. I think this, this lesson is pretty short today. So the average for the quiz was an 80%. I usually have a friendly competition between the two classes I have to see who, who gets the better grade. So my period four class has had a 77 average, so you guys are pretty good. So now we have different types of fractions. We have a zero fraction, a complex fraction, and a proper fraction, a mixed fraction, whole fraction, and proper fraction. How many of these do you guys know out of the six? How many of you guys have heard of the zero fraction? No? Have you guys heard about complex fraction? No, so I got two question marks. Has anyone heard about an improper fraction? Okay, Nick, give me an example. Uh, it's something that has uh, higher numerator than denominator. Mm -hmm. So give me an example. Um, ten fifths. Yep. Uh, give me something other than ten fifths. Uh, Twelve sixths. Okay, you're giving me whole numbers, but that's fine. And we'll do ten fifths, twelve sixths. We can do like thirteen eighths and 12 uh, fifths, so that's fine. So we've heard of an improper mixed fraction we just did. So an example of a mixed fraction, can someone give me an example, please? Just one person give me a singular example, Simon. Uh, two and four thirds. Two and four over six, that's good. Hey, Shireen. Someone give me an example of a whole fraction. Oh, I don't know, what's up? Whole fraction, a whole fraction. What does my fraction have to equal if it's a whole? One. So what's an example of a whole fraction, Caesar? Seven over seven. Seven over seven. My numerator and my denominator have to be the same because seven over seven gives me one, which is a whole. And now a proper fraction, which you guys have grown up with, and we did it on the, uh, on the quiz. What does a proper fraction look like? Nick. Uh, like five tenths. Yep. So your numerator is smaller than your denominator. So for improper, so for this guy, your numerator is bigger than the denominator. 
And for the proper one, your numerator is less than your denominator. Okay. Now there are two things that you guys may or may not have heard of before, which is fine. The zero fraction should have been mentioned, but if you don't remember, that's fine. So who can tell me what a zero fraction would look like? Well, it's in, given in the word. What's a zero fraction? Hello? Yep, yeah, numerator, denominator. Simon? In the numerator. Because you're taking zero and dividing it by the denominator, which gives you a answer of zero. So your zero fraction is where your numerator is zero and your denominator can be anything. So an example of that would be 0 over 2, 0 over 6, 0 over 8, because they all give me a answer of 0. And now the last one you guys may have seen before. I don't know if your teachers have ever drawn it out, but we have a complex fraction. Now, without using Google, can you guys try to figure out or come up with a definition for a complex fraction or give me an example of it? Anyone want to take a stab at this? Come on, there's no wrong answer. I'm not going to give you the answer. Daniel? Uh, maybe uh, a mixed and improper fraction. Mixed and improper fraction in, like, are we dividing it by each other? Or? So, no, so like, um, so two and then 10 over five thirds. Oh, so you're talking about like two and, okay, I see, two and 10 thirds. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, so we have this example over here. Can someone else give me another one? Remember, this is not about being right. It's about trying to figure out using the word what you think a complex number is. Go, Wolf. So let's just say like eight over three and that gives me 2.66 like that. Okay, anyone else? So we got two examples. Let's see, let's get two more people to try to figure this one out. There's no right answer because I haven't given you the right answer. Simon? Maybe the numerator and denominator. Oh, so like 1.5 over 1.8. Sure. Okay. We got that. And let's see one more person. Gabe? I'm not sure, but like um, when you use a fraction and like an addition statement of subtraction statement. Give me an example. Like, uh, let's say it was 2 over 6 plus, like, 1. Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah. Okay. So you have an example. So now we're going to take a vote. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to tell you guys if, if they're right or wrong. It's gonna, I'm just going to ask you. Okay. Who thinks, how many people think Daniels is correct? the two and 10 thirds, a mixed number with an improper fraction. Can you just raise your hand? Cause you guys have no idea if it's the right or the wrong answer. How many of you think it's Daniels? Okay, I got one, I got one. Who think it's Daniels? Okay, so we'll put Daniels now. So he has one vote plus Daniels. So that's two votes. So Kobo's answer, eight over three gives you a decimal. I mean, was that yours? No, yours is the two decimal ones, right? Kobo? Mine, mine. The second, okay. How many of you agree with Kobo's answer, the second one? Raise, just raise your hand, doesn't matter. If you guys don't raise your hand, you're automatically gonna think it's Gabe's and then Gabe's gonna win for no reason. So come on, who thinks it's Kobo's? I got one. One, okay, so that's two, wow. Uh, the other one was who, Nick? You said the other one? Oh no, Caesar. No, no, I did, I'm, I'm just boring, boring. Oh, 
Another one? Okay, who did the third one again? No, oh, that was Simon. Oh, you're voting for the third one. I think that's, is that how you spell your name? Yeah. Okay. Who thinks it's the third one? The decimal over a decimal. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Another one for Daniel? Who thinks it's Gabe? Miguel, you have to vote for Gabe because you switched spots with him. So automatically. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. And now the last vote. Who thinks everyone's wrong? One, two, three. <laughs> okay. So the correct answer, so this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong. So all of them are wrong. Okay. So a complex fraction are a pair of fractions stacked on top of each other. So for example, you have two over three over one over four. That's just, it's, it's, uh, the reason why it's complex is because it's complicated for no reason other than that just means 2 over 3 is being divided by 1 over 4. So this is the same thing as saying 2 over 3 divided by 1 over 4. That's what, that's what it technically means. Pardon? That, that's what makes it complex it's complete it's it's it, it's a complex way of writing a fraction or writing a division statement because people are used to writing uh like i said we want to get used to the fact of not writing the division symbol which is why you would write a complex fraction so this one if you were to compute it you would it would become two over three times four over one because you have to flip the second fraction and your answer would be eight over three so remember, a complex fraction is two fractions stacked on top of each other. So this is a lot of information, so I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to copy this down. Uh, Pardon? Is posted on Am I? Is it a decimal? Is this posted on Facebook? Yeah, I'm gonna post it. And you get a video too, so you get two things at once. That way, if you're away, you can just go online. I like hear Sophia saying stop talking. So now we're going to figure out uh, comparing and representing mixed number fractions. So we have simplified fractions. So obviously you guys know simplified means reduce it as much as you can until you cannot reduce anymore. So for example, someone give me a fraction that can be simplified. Someone give me a number for the numerator. Someone just give me a number. Five. Okay. Someone give me a denominator. No. No, it's not going to work. Lauren, 30. So now, can I simplify? Are you sure? Yeah. 
Can I divide both of these numbers by one number? Okay. What can I divide both numbers by? Five. So divide by five, divided by five. And what does my simplified fraction become? One over six. So that is my simplified fraction. So when you guys were giving me numbers that are like five over 13, five over three, I can't really simplify because the number three odd numbers are not divisible by five. And some even numbers are not divisible by five. So I would not be able to simplify it. So an example of that would be say five over 13. Can I simplify this? No, and why? No, because? 13 is not divisible by 5. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So 5 over 13, can I simplify? No, because 13 is not divisible by 5. So this is the lowest it can be. And like I said, even if we use our calculator, 5 divided by 30 gives me a decimal 1.66 repeated. And 1 divided by 6 should give me that same decimal because it is simplified and it gives me 0 0.1666. So simplifying, you got to kind of do a bit of work. The easiest one out of the two is equivalent fractions because you can keep changing your fraction however many times as you want, and it will always be equivalent. So whatever you decide to multiply the bottom by, you also multiply the top by, and you get an equivalent fraction. So I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to copy that down before I move down. <clears throat> So I'm going to scroll down. So now we have something called equivalent fractions. So fractions that represent the same amount or value, but they do it with different tops and bottoms, bottom numbers. So for example, I have 2 over 3. So what did I multiply 2 to get to 4? What happened here? What did I multiply 2 by, Lance? By 2. Which means in order for it to be equivalent, I have to multiply my denominator by 2. And what is 3 times 2? Lance? 6. So an equivalent fraction to 2 over 3 would be 4 over 6. Now I can find another equivalent fraction uh, with 2 over 3 and 4 over 6. So I'm going to change my 6, and I'm going to change that denominator into 24. So what did I multiply 6 to get to 24? Uh, Juan? 4. 
which means I also have to multiply my numerator by four. So what is my new numerator going to be? Lance? 16. So I have three equivalent fractions. I have two over three, I have four over six, and I have 16 over 24. And can someone find me another equivalent fraction with 16 over 24? What do you want? What do you guys want to multiply both the numerator and denominator by? Pick a number. Ten. Who's, someone say ten. Shireen, pick a number. Multiply by what? Okay, we'll multiply by two. So another equivalent fraction could be thirty-two over forty-eight. And if you take your calculator and get the decimal for each one it should always give you the same one. So 16 over 24 is 0 0.666. 32 over 48 is 0 0.666. 4 over 6 gives me the same thing. And 2 over 3 gives me the same thing as well. So you can make however many equivalent fractions you want just by multiplying your numerator and denominator by the same number over and over and over again. So for example, we can also have equivalent negative fractions. So I have negative four over five, which is equal to four over negative five, which is equal to negative four over five, which is the same thing as negative 0 0.8. So when it comes to negative fractions, it doesn't matter if your negative number is in your numerator, it doesn't matter if it's in the denominator, and it doesn't matter if you put your negative sign in the middle, okay? That's all the same thing because you're taking a negative and a positive and dividing it by each other, which is why you get a negative answer. Preferably, I would rather have you guys put your new put the put the negative in the numerator and the and in the middle. I don't I would prefer it not to be here because I'd rather have you work with a negative numerator than a negative denominator. So here it says that either negative four over five or negative four over five is considered to be in proper form. If there's only a negative in the denominator of a fraction, just move it up to the numerator. So for example, if I have eight over negative 12, I want you guys to write it as negative eight over 12. Okay, so if both the numerator and the denominator are negative, then you can automatically change your answer to a positive. Yes, Athalia? No, it's just like, it's just going forward. There's gonna be, you guys are mainly going to be looking at this form and this helps with slope in graphing. Yep, so linear relations. So the reason why I want you to write it like this is because it's gonna help you in, with the slope in linear relations, so your rate of change. Okay, but you're mostly gonna be seeing this later on. I'm gonna start you guys off with trying to write it like this, just to make it easier on, your, on yourselves. So like I said, if both the numerator and the denominator are negative, then the fraction is positive. So I have negative four over five, negative four over negative five. So I can just take away my negatives and I get with and I get left with the answer four over five. So another example is negative three over negative four. Both negative, so I can just rewrite it as positive three over four. Because remember, with multiplication and division laws, if you have two of the same signs, your result is always going to be a positive result.
Any questions so far? Is this pretty easy now? Okay. And then the last part of the lesson is trying to figure out which fraction is bigger than the other. So comparing fractions, which fraction is bigger? So if you look at the fractions and you are comparing, we're going to have two scenarios. Uh, we're going to have a scenario where the denominators are the same. And when that's the case, so this is case one. So when the denominators are the same, so let's say I have 5 over 16 and I have 9 over 16. So when the denominators are the same, I can just look at my numerator and I can tell which fraction is bigger. So in this case, I have 5 over 16 and 9 over 16. Which fraction is bigger? Uh, Shireen? Yeah. So I'm going to write my greater sign. 9 over 16 is greater than 5 over 16. Now I have the second scenario where my denominators are the same. Or are different, sorry. So let's say I have 2 over 3. And I have... Let's see. Uh, 2 over 9. So what do you think I have to do in order to figure out which one's bigger? Simon? You have to um, find the common denominator. Yep. So what is my common denominator between these two fractions? Uh, Lauren? Nine. Nine. So my common denominator in this case is nine. So I have to do anything with my second one because it already has a nine. I have to change my first one. So in order to get from three to nine, what do I multiply by? Shireen? So I get times three, times three. So I get six over nine and two over nine. Now, which one is bigger? Shireen? So six over nine is greater than two over nine. Okay, so when you have denominators that are the same, look at the top. When you have different denominators, you need to find the common denominator. And then you figure out which one is bigger. Any questions on this or is it pretty easy so far? Okay, so I shall stop this recording and then I'll post this once Google